Uh, we are ready then to start with the first uh, presentation that is dedicated to corrosion in reinforced concrete and protection measures. This will have two parts, one given uh, by Maria Criado, that is a researcher of the Eduardo Torroja Institute, and later on the second part will be given by myself dealing with protection measurements. Maria. Good morning, everybody. It is a great pleasure uh, for me participating in this third training school from the Smarties project. Uh, I will start this presentation about uh, uh, talking about the corrosion in reinforced concrete. Reinforced concrete structures combine the with compressive strength properties of the concrete and the excellent mechanical strength properties of the steel. Reinforced concrete materials has been used by designer, architect, civil engineer to uh, meet high mechanical strength, fire resistance, durability, safe adaptability and low cost requirements. This uh, explains why the Portland cement has been uh, the construction materials per excellent uh, for decade. However, the corrosion of the reinforced cement steel is one of the main causes of the premature degradation of the reinforced concrete structures. We can see in this picture several examples. If I want to know what is the relevance of this problem, currently the three or four percentage of the gross national product in the developed concrete are connected to maintain and repair operation. Corrosion is the reaction of a metal with the environment, leading to a measurable alteration of the metal properties. Corrosion consists in the transformation of the metal atoms in the, in the metal into the metal ions in the liquid. This reaction is a called oxidation reaction. And a releasing of electron takes place in the metal. This reaction can occur in reverse direction. It's called reduction reaction. The metal ions react with the electrons in the solid to form uh, or to deposit metal atoms in the metal surface. When the metal dissolution and metal deposition reaction occur at the same time, the equilibrium potential is reached. This equilibrium can be calculated by the Nernst equation. This equation includes the potential, the standard potential is zero. Uh, valid under standard condition and the concentration of the oxidized and reduced, reduces state. In this case, we can see this equation doesn't depend on the pH, but in other reactions and other systems, it is considered. It's common to represent the equilibrium potential, the pH and the potential in a, a diagram. This, uh, which is referred to Purve diagram. Each uh, metal has a specific uh, Purve diagram. In this case, we can see the Purve diagram of iron. The lines represent the equilibrium state, and the areas between the lines represent different stability regions. The immunity region is where the metal is stable. The metal ions of the stable species are in the corrosion region, and the insoluble metal oxide or hydroxide of the stable uh, species are in the passivity region. In this case, it's possible to form the protective uh, layer 
which uh, keeps the deposition uh, dissolution metal rate very to low level. A steel rebars embedded in concrete uh, are protected by the corrosion from the oxide uh, layer, uh, is, uh, which is formed and maintained on the surfaces uh, in a in high alkaline uh, environment surrounding of the concrete. The concrete has a pH between 12.5-13.5 and in these conditions we can see in the purve diagram of iron the steel is in a passive state. I would like to mention the Portland dye has an important onset or sorry role um, on the onset of the corrosion process. It, uh, uh, as it uh, has the ability to maintain the pH of the system through buffering mechanisms. The corrosion of the steel occurs uh, by the electrical uh, action where the metal of different nature uh, in are in contact, uh, electrical cont uh, contact in the uh, presence of water and oxygen. In this case, the iron is uh, uh, dissolved and uh, we uh, obtain a positively charged iron ions. And they are uh, passed to the uh, liquid. This is the dissolution of uh, iron, is the anodic reaction, and the negatively charged uh, electrons go to the electrode through the cathode to react with the electrolyte constituents to form hydroxyl ion. This is the, the reduction of oxygen and is the cathode reaction. These hydroxyl ions in turn combine with the iron ions to form a ferric hydroxide, which uh, then to convert RAS. We can see the different um, equations involved in this process to form the RAS. The corrosion initiation and reinforcing concrete uh, structures can be depend on the penetration of the CO2 and the chloride ions. The carbonation of concrete or the chloride uh, penetration can cause the early deterioration of the structures. And it is required a continuous monitoring of them. But sometimes it's difficult to to monitor continuously and uh, the models are required to estimate the residual service lives of the structures. Several research uh, has been uh, used. The TUTIS model, we can see in this picture, and this uh, model consists in two phases, the initiation and propagation. And this model uh, will uh, give an idea about the deterioration of the structure. An initiation time during which the aggressive ag agents penetrate the covered concrete uh, until they reach sufficient concentration at the steel surface to cause the passivation. It is depend on the amount of the aggressive species and the thickness and quality of the concrete cover. A propagation time during which uh, corrosion leads to a limited state that is usually identified by failure of service ability associated with cracking and spall spalling of the concrete cover. And it is uh, inversely proportional to the corrosion rate, whatever the tolerable level of damage. For corrosion of steel and concrete to occur, the following condition must all be satisfied. The provision of an adult cathode couple with at least part of the steel acting as an auto, an auto. 
the maintenance of the of an electrical circuit, free flowing ions, the presence of moisture, and the presence of oxygen. In a, a concrete environment, we can a, find a corrosion originated by two common mechanisms. Lowering the, the pH due to the carbonation and um, a localized attack by the presence of the uh, aggressive species such as chloride. Now I'm going to explain the mechanisms uh, uh, for corrosion induced by CO2 and chloride, and then uh, Dr. Castellote. Uh, will explain uh, the transport and talk about the accelerated and natural test. The carbonation uh, in, the, in the concrete uh, occurs uh, by the reaction of the, uh, of the when the um, concrete uh, are, is exposed to CO2, which is present uh, in the atmosphere. And the CO2 react with the alkaline substances in the pore solution and with the hydrated phases of the uh, cement. Um, this uh, reduce of the pH of the system to an insufficient value to maintain the passive state, around, pH around 8 or 9. The CO2 front, <coughs> sorry. Uh, penetrates through the pore structure of the concrete, but this process takes time, many decades. And the, uh, if the carbon depth reaches to the steel surface, the passive state, uh, the passive field is not stable anymore. Only uh, this uh, carbonation or, or this process uh, occur when uh, uh, or under wet period, when the concrete is temporarily wet due to the rain. We can see here the, react the cathodic reaction showing in blue and the anodic reaction showing in red uh, are, distri are uniform distributed over the steel surface. Both reactions occur at the same area, and this kind of the corrosion is called microcell uniform or general corrosion. The carbonation induced uh, the rate of carbonation depends on different factors: environmental factors such as humidity, CO2 concentration, and temperature. But they uh, depend. Uh, also depend uh, on uh, factors related to the cement. The diffusion of the CO2 uh, uh, within the, the concrete is facilitated through the aerated pores. When the structures are dry, the CO2 diffusion uh, inward rapidly. But the carbonation reaction doesn't produce because of the lack of water. When the pores are uh, filled with water, the uh, carbonation rate is very low because of the slow di uh, CO2 diffusion in water. Only occur carbonation when the pores are partially uh, fill with water. This is uh, this occur in the uh, concrete surfaces. Uh, as CO2 content in the air increase, the carbonation rate increase. An increase of the temperature will raise the carbonation rate. Regarding of the concrete uh, composition, a low water cement ratio and adequate is cure leads to the less porous cement matrix and slow down the penetration of carbonation. Moreover, higher alkalinity may decrease the carbonation rate. I would like to explain 
how the carbonation induced corrosion of steel damages the reinforced concrete structures. It uh, forms a corrosion product showing in orange and a greater volume uh, than the steel uh, itself. This uh, volume in uh, increase induces a tensile stress, stress in the concrete and spalling and uh, cracking and spalling of the concrete uh, cover takes place. In the case of the chloride induced corrosion, the, the aggressive species is the chloride came from the desizing soil of the uh, sea water. The splash water uh, may bring the chloride to the concrete uh, surface and the chloride ions uh, penetrate of the pore structure uh, over time, uh, many decades. And when this uh, chloride reaches the steel surface, break down the, in a sufficient concentration, break down the passive film. In this case, the mechanism is not uniform. Uh, we can see in this picture, uh, we have a local anode showing in rook and red and the relative large cathodic area showing in blue surrounding of the uh, local anode. In this case the, chlor the corrosion is called uh, macrocell or local corrosion. Uh, in this case we uh, have uh, two uh, processes, uh, an increase of the concentration of chlorides in this zone because the, the chloride uh, are uh, negatively charged and migrate to the local or the anodic region and a decrease of the alkali alkalinity. Acidity is produced by the hydrolysis of the corrosion product inside the, the pit. The corrosion initiation in presence of chloride depends on the reinforcing steel surface. The presence of mill scale and persisting rust layer increase the corrosion initiation. Moisture content influence of the corrosion initiation uh, for relative humidity values below 65% is practically no relevance, but in the range from 80% to 90%, the, uh, it uh, has a uh, pronounced uh, effect. Finally, there are different uh, parameters related to the cement uh, also influence in the chloride-induced corrosion. In this case, uh, cementite and water binder ratio. The presence of the supplementary cementitious materials, flyas, slag, uh, silica, fume, leads to a refinement of the pore structure and prevent the penetration of chloride ions in general. For other types of uh, cement, for example, alkali activated materials, the porlandite is not a typical reaction product. Uh, therefore, the ability of the hydrosyl ions from the pore solution uh, will have a very important influence in seeding the stability of the passive state, the passive film. Sorry. Regarding the water binder ratio, it uh, has very different uh, uh, behavior according to its value. For values below 0 0.5, it increase the resistance against corrosion. Between 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 is contradictory, and uh, values above 0 0.75 decrease the resistance against corrosion. In addition, I would like to explain the, uh, how the chloride-induced corrosion of the steel damage the reinforcing concrete structure. We can see in this figure 
the it consists in the laws uh, in the sectional area laws of the steel. In this case, uh, it's not possible to observe this type of the deterioration by visual inspection. And the most common uh, methodology to uh, measure the corrosion rate are the electrochemical uh, technique. Uh, now I want to explain briefly these uh, electrochemical measurements and then uh, this uh, is going to explain in more detail uh, after the coffee break. Uh, the corrosion risks is, is evaluated using a three electro configuration system we can see in this figure. It consists in the working electrode, our steel, the counter electrode is a novel metal or, or stainless steel, and reference electrode, for example, silver silver chloride. The, ref the electrochemical measurement are carried out in simulated concrete pore solution or, or an or in mortar or concrete. This, uh, uh, this uh, electrochemical measurement are recording in potentiostat galvanostat or in frequency response analyzer. Uh, we can see in this uh, picture. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Alonso uh, will explain uh, about different uh, protection methods to increase the service light of the reinforcing concrete structure. Good morning. Uh, we are going to dedicate now the the time to the use of protect, protection measures when we cannot guarantee to reach the service life of the structure. Okay, our situation then now is that we have the aggressive chlorized CO2, they penetrate through the cover and they reach the reinforcement, destroy the passive layer and uh, induce a local attack caused by chlorides, for instance, or a more general corrosion caused by the carbonation and decrease of the pH around the reinforcement. In any case, the service life is affected. Uh, this well-known uh, 2T model considers the transport of the, of the aggressive and the initiation of corrosion and the propagation. For the point of view of uh, service life, it depends, it's not uh, completely defined, it will depend on the type of the structure that is considered, but several times and even codes consider the end of the service life when the corrosion is initiated. Uh, so uh, we have in this region, we need to identify that time, the time dedicated to transport and the time dedicated to, tra uh, to the passivation. We are going to deal with this case. In the case of chlorides, the chlorides reach the reinforcement and they need to be accumulated at the reverse uh, level until they reach a value that we identify as chloride threshold where the corrosion is initiated. When the phenomena is carbonation, the pH will decrease progressively. Carbon, uh, Portlandite, for instance, will decrease, will, will decrease progressively and calcite will increase in cont uh, on the contrary. And so that indicates a, de a decrease of pH. So, and corrosion will be initiated. Okay, uh, so this uh, phenomena, of course, uh, show a large variability. There is not one value and uh, it will depend on several factors. In the case of the transport, it depends mainly on concrete and environment. But what happens in the case of the reinforcement? In the case of the reinforcement, it depends on the steel concrete interface. The, this large variability you can show very well in this picture where uh, data from the literature are collected. If you look at this value around 0.4 or 0.6 is the typical value employed and considered as the end of the uh, chloride threshold uh, to calculate the service life. However, as I said, this depends 
of the, uh, a lot of factors that takes at the steel concrete interface. The first is the reinforcement itself that changes the quality of the reinforcement. Also, the rust that appears on the surface of this um, reinforcement during the production itself. And this is named the mild skill. Also, the presence of uh, moisture is very relevant, the presence of air voids, and also the presence of cracks. All this can cause this bar large variability of chloride threshold. But what happens when we are not able to maintain the passivity of the reinforcement during the service life of the structure. In such cases, and in very aggressive environments, it's necessary that we employ uh, rebar protection methods. But how to select one? Here is a view of the most uh, uh, typical employee. We can take a decision analyzing the reinforcement and changing or modifying the situation of the reinforcement. Uh, which type of measure? Cathodic protection. With cathodic protection, what it is done is to modify the, we can say, the electrolyte and the uh, steel concrete interface. With the galvanized rebar, what we are modifying is the surface of the reinforcement through a um, uh, um, metal, metallic coating. We also can be possible to use a, a, an uh, organic coating like epoxy, that can uh, isolate us the reinforcement from the environment. But also it's possible to modify the concrete. Of course, modify the concrete, the codes uh, generally consider the minimum requirements concerning cement, water seven ratio, and uh, cover thickness, depending on the aggressiveness of the environment. But also another protection can be used, that is the use of admixtures that has the ability to inhibit corrosion or the uh, use of painting on the, or even uh, repellents of water on the surface of the concrete. In any case, the objective is to extend the structure service life. We are going now to dedicate time to this, uh, each of these methods. What is galvanized uh, reinforcement? For, for this protection method, the river is immersed in a thin bath that is around 450 grades to 10 centigrades. It keeps for a few minutes, three or five minutes, and then a coating, uh, an alloy coating of zinc and iron is formed. You can see here in this picture, this white is part of the reinforcement and inside is the steel. Uh, better this coating should be homogeneously covering the whole surface. The thickness of this coating is around 100 micrometers. And it's not a poor thin, it's a, some alloy, a content of iron and zinc closer to the steel that decrease in, in iron and increase in zinc until the external part is poor thin. Uh, what happens with this type of element that now is thin comes into contact with the, rain, uh, with the environment. In this diagram, the corrosion rate of the zinc uh, can be appreciated that increase when the pH increase. So in the typical region of Portland cement based materials, the pH is higher, the corrosion rate of zinc is very higher. However, in the neutral conditions, the zinc is very stable, a very appropriate material for such conditions. What happens then is when the zinc comes in contact with the alkaline environment? It has a, a, a significant reaction initially that uh, causes the for, um, formation of zinc ions, but also the generation in the cathodic reaction of hydrogen gas. This hydrogen gas is moved out of the concrete, but generates some uh, holes in, uh, close to the steel concrete interface. Uh, in this region, during the time of hydration of the cement, calcium ions are formed. And this is very relevant because in the alkaline conditions of the pediment, the presence of this calcium and with the zinc ions, a new crystals can, will be formed on the surface of the uh, galvanized uh, reinforcement. This type of crystals that have an hexagonal 
uh, uh, structure that cover homogeneously the surface, forming the calcium hydroxychincate layer. And then the, uh, the surface of the galvanized reinforcement results passivated. Once uh, our reinforcement is passivated, what happens in the aggressive environment? What is the service life of this galvanized river? So, uh, if we are expecting that the aggressive will reach the reinforcement if it's the decrease of the pH. As the sink is stable in low pHs, uh, it's a good, uh, the expectancy is to have a good performance. If the presence of the chlorides, for instance, there is a certain time to uh, accumulate chlorides until the sink is depassivated and initiates the corrosion of the coating. Here you can see the, the, the coating and how progressively the, uh, the coating is uh, destroyed due to the, the, the action of the corrosion and the, in the chlorides. Then progressively decrease and until the, uh, the coating is completely destroyed and reach the, um, the steel. However, the corrosion is not initiated yet because when both metals are in contact with the environment, the scene is the anode and the iron becomes the, the cathode. And so the reinforcement is still remains protected. So we have a protection uh, coming from the barrier of the passive mechanism, then the chlorides to initiate the corrosion, and then the cathodic protection. We can see better here. This has been a reinforcement, a galvanized reinforcement exposed to chlorides. The, here the coating has disappeared. Still, the reinforcement is not destroyed until a certain level of the deterioration of the galvanized coating is reached, and then the corrosion can be initiated locally. Uh, doing experiments in this sense, uh, analyzing different um, Portland cement in, with galvanized reinforcement and pro in presence of chlorides, um, chlorides increase in the contact with the galvanized reinforcement, the corrosion is initiated and increased, but the coating of the galvanized steel is at, uh, is at the same time decreasing until it's completely uh, destroyed. Uh, analyzing the chlorides at the river level, the in amount of chlorides is significantly increased. Even analyzing the literature indicates that with the chlorides found at the river level, when the corrosion of the steel reinforcement is initiated, is higher than in the presence of, of uh, chlorides. From this study, once the um, chloride threshold is determined, it has been possible to uh, to go into the 2T diagram and considering the transport of uh, the aggressive through the coating and uh, the amount of the um, chlorides or the chloride threshold for the galvanize, employ any of the models proposed by the codes, is possible to estimate the improvement in service life. And uh, uh, here is the case for the steel, assuming a 0.6% of chloride threshold for different depths. And here is the case for galvanized reinforcement, assuming a, a chloride threshold of 1.5, for, for instance, and a clear increase or a time um, to initiate the corrosion of the steel rebar is observed in presence of the protection method. Uh, the other method, the stainless steel reinforcement. Uh, this method increases significantly the chloride and carbonation of rebar corrosion. This method uh, we always use as representative the, the pyre of uh, Progreso, Progreso in Mexico. Uh, there was first constructed in this bridge in steel, but it uh, takes after 20 years really bad. This is the old bridge, and the new bridge is made with a stainless steel reinforcement, and it still remains. Uh, the protection of this uh, stainless steel reinforcement depends very much on the composition of the of the material of this stainless steel. The content of chromium, the content of nickel that is very representative and is the most expensive element in this, uh, um, this type of uh, stainless steel, uh, and the duplex stainless steel that are the more commonly employed now. And this uh, considers certain content of chromium, variable or lower content of nickel, and also include molybdenum. 
So this type of protection, uh, high resistance to pitting, uh, high resistance to intergranular corrosion and uh, stress corrosion cracking, and high resistance to thermal fatigue. Again, we can consider this type of protection with the immersion of the samples containing the stainless steel in the aggressive solution chlorides until the pit is initiated. But we need to detect with electrochemical methods, of course, the initiation of the moment that, uh, that onset of corrosion is found. Uh, here is observed clearly for different type of stainless steel with different composition, the corrosion rate low in all the cases until there is a moment that corrosion starts and increase suddenly and maintains in time. Also, this uh, can be observed with uh, corrosion potential, a progressive uh, increase and then a decrease to more negative values. So, finally, uh, what we have extended is the time to the passivation, uh, increasing the amount of chlorides that the protection method can support at the rebar level. Uh, this is the case for different types of stainless steel with different characteristics, but at least values above 2, 3 percent and even up to 10, 12 percent can be found depending on the, um, um, on the type of stainless steel. But again, if uh, the service life is calculated, uh, as explained before, this is the case for the stainless steel, uh, for the uh, conventional rebar steel reinforcements, and how, uh, considering one um, type of concrete with uh, one uh, specific transport of aggressive, uh, clearly the, the, the initiation of corrosion can be expected in a quite relative short time uh, moment. But if the stainless steel is, em uh, is employed, the increase of the time for corrosion initiated is significantly affected. Uh, by the, due to the increase in the chloride threshold with the, due to the protection method. Another uh, um, protection method is, the, uh, for instance, the use of uh, one organic coating. Uh, very typical is the epoxy coatings resins. That, uh, uh, for this, the application, different methods of application are now possible, but one is uh, first eliminate the oxide or the pre-oxide that can be on the surface of the, of the river, then heating the river and then apply the resin coating um, and uh, demonstrate that there are not, uh, um, we can see, fails of the coating or pores that uh, uh, can be uh, affected by the um, corrosion when it's exposed to the environment. Of course, it's important the ability of that coating to uh, give uh, different forms to the reinforce, uh, reinforcement at, uh, in this case. But in any case, if there is this protection method, the, the, uh, it's acting as a barrier. So if the barrier is good, well protected, and, and it uh, has not fails, okay, they will support high content of aggressives. But if there is a fail, then the corrosion underneath the coating can take place and local corrosion can occur because it's not able to protect itself the, the reinforcement except if that coating has in, included another type of protection method that could be one inhibitor. What about the coatings for the concrete? Um, there are uh, a lot of uh, type of coatings and even methods now that are really improving a lot. That is, they are dealing with waterproofing that are um, able to protect the concrete itself, but also the reinforcement at the same time. Uh, for instance, in the case of carbonation, there are very good coatings developing in the market that uh, retard the carbonation, the penetration of carbonation. And the exchange of moisture, as you can see in this, in this case, here the, the, without the coating, the, um, the capture of moisture is very high, but as the coating is present and its resistance to the entrance of water, this uh, amount of water inside the system is significantly decreased and so decrease the risk of corrosion. Uh, <clears throat> also happens with the, the, this type of coatings when immersed in solutions like chlorides that uh, can resist the 
not the penetration of chlorides, the amount of chlorides to initiate corrosion, and also the transport of these chlorides because they are uh, giving a barrier in the external part of the of the of the cover, of the uh, reinfo uh, concrete reinforcement. What about the other protection method, the cathodic protection? The cathodic protection is really is an advantageous method in the sense that it's able to avoid corrosion initiation, but also to stop corrosion it, it has been initiated. That is very interesting, but means that it has to be controlled during the service life of the structure. So uh, to, to uh, be able to, uh, to get that one structure is cathodically protect, uh, protected, is necessary to move this reinforcement from the risk of corrosion to the immunity. That is, we need a decrease at the river level at in a very cathodic potential. In this situation, we are in the immunity region of the Purve diagram. Uh, how to get that? Through metals that are more prone to corrosion in contact, in electrical contact with the reinforcement, or do it artificially by impress cooling. So, in this, uh, uh, the type of applications could be as preventive measure before the damage take, uh, take place, uh, avoided these uh, galvanic cells that is, are very common to be formed when there is a local repair, and uh, to, uh, to in repair of, um, of damaged elements exposed to aggressive media. So, it's a quite extended method, but uh, needs to um, have a clear expertise and knowledge about this uh, method to be employed. In the case of sacrificial nanodes, different types of metals can be employed. One of it is the, the scene itself, because uh, they behave like an anode, and uh, they are dissolved preferentially to the uh, steel reinforcement. All the steel reinforcement needs to be connected and not acid at a cathode. Uh, look at this example. We have connected both elements. One is acting as an adult, while the other is uh, cathodically protected. Uh, the other method is throw impress cooling. Uh, in this case, the anode is stable. It's a material that could be uh, titanium oxide or even carbon. And uh, the uh, anodic the reaction that is coming uh, from the, um, the water, that is, uh, is the anodic reaction, while in the, at the level of the rebel is the same reaction, the cathodic. We, uh, in this case, it's necessary to impose an electrical field, and uh, the uh, river is always acting in the negative potential, while the anode is in the um, positive uh, potential. Uh, in any case, it's necessary that the river is uh, polarized below minus 750 millivolts and the current in press is relatively high, depends on the structure, but at least 2050 milliamps per square meter. But this uh, electrical field also influences in the uh, cover itself, and so um, the chlorides that are negative can move out uh, towards a positive uh, uh, potential that is the anode, the an, um, uh, alkalis can move in that are positively charged, a certain inclusion pH can take place and also is necessary to take uh, care that not alkali silica reaction occurs as a secondary effect. So, but electroosmosis phenomena also occur. But the, the intention is to protect the river and avoid them the, its corrosion. And there is another application of this uh, concept that is the cathodic prevention. In this case, the idea is to move from the corrosion uh, risk to the passivation risk. So to do this, the decrease of the potential necessary to reach this situation is uh, obviously lower. This can be applied only in those cases where corrosion has not been initiated yet, because uh, the advantage of cathodic protection is also a repair method when corrosion has been initiated. But let us we see this diagram where, uh, as the 
Corrosion, uh, the potential of the uh, reinforcement is more positive, the amount of chloride to resist is lower. As more negative becomes the potential of the reinforcement, then a higher, a higher chlorides can be supported by the reinforcement itself. Uh, considering that uh, uh, this region could be moved be between minus 400 and 600, the, in this region, the increase in the amount of chlorides to support the reinforcement is significantly increased, and the amount of current is lower, however. What about the other method, the use of inhibitors, admixtures, and concrete? The uh, two applications can be considered for this type of admixtures. One, as prevention method, that means inhibitor are added like an admixture in, during the mixing, and the other, considered as a curative or repair method. That means apply the inhibitor on the surface. And in this case, they have to penetrate through the cover and reach the reinforcement in a short time and also be able to uh, react in, create or modify the passive layer or even uh, if the corrosion was initiated. However, this is not the case we are going to consider. We are going to consider the case of uh, uh, inhibitors at mix uh, in the mix of the concrete. That is the most common protection method. Uh, in that case, the inhibitor is added in, together with the components and is necessary an homogeneous distribution of this additive in the, in the concrete itself and, of course, at the rebar level, because it's necessary to modify the passive layer. The question is to create a new passive layer or a more resistant passive layer for the aggressive. Uh, we can classify the, the inhibitors that I did in this case as conventional inhibitors, biocompatible inhibitors or encapsulated inhibitors. These are different types of application, but also uh, they are at different level of, re of developing. The more conventional inhibitors, at the same time, we can classify according to the method or the way they modify the passive layer. For instance, if uh, one inhibitor uh, modifies the anodic reaction, can modify this passive film. It modify the cathodic reaction, can also modify this passive film. This is the case with nitrides that are anodic inhibitors or phosphate, uh, phosphate that are more cathodic inhibitors. Another type of conventional inhibitors are the uh, organic, like amines or amino alcohols. Uh, why appears these inhibitors? Because the anodic uh, nitrites are conventional toxic, toxic for health, and so uh, new alternatives appear. Uh, these are uh, mainly organic, and these are uh, forming a film on the surface of the reinforcement that is the main base of the protection of the reinforcement. But sometimes mm, all these inhibitors that are already commer commercialized, they are a mix of them. They are mixing anodic, cathodic, and organic inhibitors. So because of that, it's difficult to understand what is the mechanism because uh, of very often we don't know the composition of the inhibitor in, com in commercial inhibitors. In any case, what, are, uh, what we are waiting is to guarantee the presence of the inhibitor in the, in the pores. If uh, we need this, uh, this element to protect the river continuously. But there are different limitations that we should analyze. The in, in limitation to know the mechanism of the innovation, uh, the, um, how this admixture will affect the workability of the concrete, uh, how it affects other properties of the concrete like uh, mechanical strength or uh, to reach the optimal uh, concentration of the inhibitor at the rebar level or how this can affect the, 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 the oxide or the, the influence of parameters like temperature, moisture and, and pH, for instance. And of course, how to determine the inhibitor efficiency. Uh, this for conventional inhibitors, I have already mentioned, uh, sodium calcium nitrides, phosphate, uh, thin oxide, and also the organic inhibitors, mono, uh, odietanolamine, tia, trietanolamine. Uh, all of them have a certain modification of the properties, either in the fresh state or hardened state, that we need to take into account when we are adding these uh, additives into the mixture. 
Uh, but what about the, the inhibition efficiency? Let us to see the case of uh, nitrates. When they are added, uh, in, they are not uh, in the system. This is a poor solution with uh, containing chlorides. And uh, it's added a certain content of feed inhibitor. Progressively, the protection of the reinforcement is detected until the optimum amount is reached, and then the river is completely protected. The same will happen in the case with monofluorphosphate. When we have the risk of carbonation, there is a decrease due to the decrease of the pH. You can observe that there is a difference depending on the concentration of the monofluorphosphate. This is the, because the phosphates, when they interact with the, um, the pore media, they, they form uh, phos um, calcium phosphate that is very insoluble, but the pH increase. So this creates a retard in the, in the pH, pH during carbonation, but at the same time there is a retard in the corrosion initiation with the presence of the inhibitor with increasing amount. But also it's important how uh, these uh, two components interact with the reinforcement. Uh, if uh, from the beginning the system, uh, the, the aggressive the corrosion is initiated, and if uh, both elements are in competence, the aggressive and the inhibitor, uh, but from the beginning, the passive layer could be lost and then destroyed, and uh, uh, could be or not recovered in time. If the, if the passive layer has been able to be formed in presence of the inhibitor, for a long time, then this passive layer could have enough protection to maintain uh, the passivation for a long time. Here is the case with the wine organic inhibitors, an alkalonamine, that uh, was in contact with the inhibitor for a long time and the passivity is reached and then the, all the chlorides uh, are in, in presence of the systems, appears and comes into contact, the corrosion is not initiated. However, in the case of no inhibitors, or um, when the inhibitor are at the same time that they are received, the protection uh, uh, is very, very significantly affected. Uh, also, the, the long term of this uh, passive state, of course, the ability to react in presence of the aggressive. The case of carbonation, the carbonation appears late, it's a, a slow uh, process, but in the presence of the inhibitor, the risk of corrosion can be significantly uh, reduced. The same uh, can be expected in the presence of chlorides. This is the case with nitrites. Uh, I have to say that the, really the efficiency of the nitrous inhibitor is, the, is the, one of the highest that has been found with inhibitors up to now. That is the reason the challenge to look for alternative inhibitors that are not toxic but have a real high potential of corrosion inhibition. In this case, as modifying the water semen ratio and modifying the content of the nitrates, the decrease in, in corrosion risk is clearly appreciated, even if chlorides are present from the beginning. When the chlorides penetrates from outside in presence of the inhibitor, is a clear delay in the corrosion initiation that indicates the protection of the system. With uh, organic inhibitors, this is the case. The, um, first, the passivation is reached with the inhibitor present, and then the um, aggressive comes into contact, while in the, in the absence of the inhibitor, corrosion initiation that no happens, that no occurs 300 days after in, uh, with the alkalonamines. Uh, again, uh, we can uh, try to identify the amount of chlorides at the river level when the corrosion is initiated. That is the chloride threshold. Uh, these are values uh, that uh, has been taken from the literature. Uh, an increase is observed in the, in the chloride threshold also that can estimate an extension of the service life. What about the other type of inhibitors that I mentioned? The biocompatible in nature inhibitors. They appear because of the toxicity that some inhibitors are, um, the conventional inhibitors some of them have. These inhibitors are a natural source and identify like nature inhibitors, green, eco-friendly inhibitors. 
They are uh, generally from plant starch product. They are very abundant in the um, uh, in the nature. Is they are easy to produce, but it's necessary to uh, follow a process to obtain the the. The, the, the inhibitor, the strat, and um, they are rich in antioxidant and not toxic and biodegradable. That is an advantage, but still they are not commercial, commercialized, they are not commercial inhibitors on this. The cl different categories will depend on the characteristic of this inhibitor, depending mainly on the type of uh, plant that is produced, but uh, the classification more common is organic uh, inhibitors, uh, this is the more typically employed. The inorganic green, green inhibitors that are mainly inorganic results that from the extract of the plants and also natural polymers. Only uh, this example that uh, shows us the efficiency of the inhibitor. This is a tea, um, a tea inhibitor coming for the tea plant and uh, the corrosion rate has been observed significant, uh, significantly bit reduced and, and their wetting and dry cycles in comparison with the reference uh, without the inhibitor and even with some co um, conventional inhibitors. And what about uh, the last uh, type of inhibitors, the encapsulated inhibitors? Uh, in this case, what, uh, what is the, the concept? The idea is to encapsulate the inhibitor to be used only when it's necessary inside the concrete. And uh, there are different uh, methodologies employed. One is the double layer hydroxide, the use of microcapsules, or the calcium exchange zeolites. The more uh, studied is the double layer hydroxide. This is based mainly in hydrotal sites. It has a layer structure, as uh, these uh, layers here. The external layers are um, uh, a series of positive charge and the internal and negative charge. And the, the final uh, nature, electrical nature of the of the layers are uh, neutral. And inside these layers are the anions, water and anions. Uh, you can, it can be introduced anions like uh, nitrites that will be liberated when uh, is, they are needed and exchanged by another ion, as for instance the chloride. The chloride can be captured by this layer while the uh, inhibitor could be liberated to be used to protect the reinforcement. Uh, as I showed you some of our experience, uh, um, in the case of the, the chloride transport, a clear decrease uh, was observed with uh, this LDH inhibitor that we, we are using in the Lorthenis project that was produced by a company still no, no under, still is under development, uh, um, although the, there is a very promising results, but they are coming to be commercialized soon. Uh, and this in, uh, beneficial inhibition effect is observed with this reference material without the inhibitor in comparison with the presence of the inhibitor, where after three years we have observed 75% of corrosion initiation in the in absence of the inhibitor with respect to the 0% in the presence in the presence of this uh, in LDH uh, inhibitor. This is only an overview of what happens with the um, chloride threshold uh, increase when we employ the different protection methods that I mentioned here. The highest is found with the stainless steel, but depends significantly on the stainless steel composition. And finally, uh, about the protection methods uh, that I mentioned all the time, either coming or acting on the reinforcement or acting on the concrete, they, all of them have advantages, uh, uh, advantages and limitations and can be employed in one scenario in preference to the other. I mean that one protection method is not generally used and valid for all the conditions. It will depend on what is the condition of the structure that should be selected the most suitable uh, type of uh, protection method. Uh, in the case of galvanized uh, steel, is uh, easy to use, medium cost, and no maintenance is needed, but uh, is affected by local damage and will be protect carbonation and chlorides. In the case of stainless steel, it's the same situation. 
but higher cost, uh, perhaps, and the cathodic protection needs a continuous maintenance and experience, but uh, of course the protection could be the best. Uh, with epoxy, uh, also depends on the cost and application, and with the inhibitors, could be the lo lower cost, mm, no maintenance, is easy to use, and, but it's a risk of uh, the dosage is necessary to identify the optimum dosage in the systems to see the efficiency. And uh, uh, perhaps to say some few words about the crack state, uh, if we notice a, a clear effect in the chloride threshold due to the uh, different factors, in the presence of cracks, this uh, affects significantly the chloride threshold and decreases significantly. However, there are very few data on that. And uh, in our experience in resilience project was uh, using different crack levels of the reinforcement, we observed clearly a retardation of uh, the, the corrosion initiation uh, depending on the crack size and the type of uh, concrete, this was high-performance concrete and ultra-high-performance concrete. But, of course, with the expectancies of using, for instance, cell healing agents that will, uh, could seal these cracks, uh, uh, we can expect another protection measure that could be included that uh, can uh, extend the service life of our structure. And uh, I think this is the end. Um, <laughs>